Hi guys, Zwerg here, and I thought I'd do a series of videos on some of my quirks and eccentricities. When I watch my favorite artists' videos, what I want to know is their day-to-day -day life, what makes them tick, what makes them themselves, and what inspires the music. So I thought I'd do these Zwerg quirks, and the first one, it's not maybe not the most exciting one, but I have to do it now, so Zwerg quirk number one. I dye my eyebrows and eyelashes, even when I'm blonde. But as you can see, uh, thank you Jessica Ricker, she dyed my hair dark, it looks great. And I'm going to dye the eyebrows and eyelashes to match. My natural eyebrows and eyelashes are even lighter than this, there's still a bit of dye in there. The products I use are um, Rectosil. You can Google it online. Also, there's this peroxide based developer liquid right here. I also have purchased online, I forget where, this little, uh, this little bowl and brush where you mix the two together. You mix the dye with the peroxide. You can use peroxide too, peroxide works. First I start with the, the dye itself, and I use dark brown. You just pour some in here, if you can see that. Then you pour some peroxide or the activator in. And I'm going to do this, try to do this without spilling any of it on my clothes. Rule number one, when you're doing this, wear something, or don't wear a shirt at all. Wear something you don't mind getting bleach and dye on. Also, when you go to wash it off, even if you use soap and water and wash it off your face, when you go to dry your face, I've done this, use an old rag or something that you don't mind getting um, bleach on because it can turn spotty. I'm just mixing the liquid here in with the dye. You, you want the consistency to be like a mousse, like a chocolate mousse. Now this right here, this consistency, I can tell right now it needs a bit more activator, a bit more peroxide. You can use any moisturizer really, and some Q-tips. Okay, so you put the, it doesn't have to be a clean job, just, you know, slather it on there. Try not to get any of the area that you want dyed. If you get moisturizer on the hair, it's not gonna, it's not gonna dye. Because it's, the moisturizer is gonna be a barrier. Okay, so I got my moisturizer on. I got my dye all moosed up. This is just about the consistency that you want. I don't know if you can see that. It's trial and error. You just got to keep doing it and um, you'll find what consistency is the right one. Because if you have too much dye, it's not going to bleach out the hair so that the new color can grab. If you have too much peroxide, it's just going to run down your face and it's going to get in your eyes and you're going to have to take it all off and do it over again. And that hurts. Placement. Okay, so for male, it's really interesting the socio-anthropological aspects that factor into what is considered attractive in the opposite sex, or the same sex if you're gay. There's all kinds of variety in nature, and I'm not saying that one type of beauty is better than another, but from the classical aesthetics, the golden ratio mask is a really good blueprint for what is traditionally considered attractive to the opposite sex. And for a female, what she's essentially looking for in a mate is, and we this is on a primal level, we're not conscious of this when we're, you know, turned on by people, but she's looking for protection and provision for her and her offspring and health. So a symmetrical proportionate face Facial features are indicative of health, so it signifies good genes to mate with. Now, if you look at the male golden ratio mask, you notice that the male, in comparison to the female mask, has a very low, heavy brow. 
you know, think Tom Cruise and Summer Holder, those really low, heavy brows. And what that signifies, just from my research, I could be wrong, is that this is an effective hunter gatherer and protector. So you think when you get adversarial, the brows come down, the eyes narrow. So the eye and the male is a bit smaller and narrower than the female. Hers are more open and expressive, indicative of female uh, attractive characteristics. And the male looks like he's, when you're talking about the fight or flight response, he's ready to fight, right? So he's going to be an effective protector of the female and her offspring. And this is just from what I've researched, you know. And again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think the variance in nature is what makes nature so interesting. But these are just classical standards of beauty studied by Da Vinci and Michelangelo. And also it does make the eyes stand out more and eyes are the window to the soul. Eyes communicate the most. So what I'm doing with my eyebrows, because I want a very masculine look, is that I want a thick, heavy, low brow. So I'm going to put the emphasis on the lower brow hairs down underneath to make my eyebrows look lower than they actually are. And also try to get all the hair out here so that the, they look thick. Okay, so lashes. You want to try to counterbalance your flaws. So when looking at the golden ratio mask, my eyes are a little bit too close together. So what I want to do is create the illusion of them being further apart. So I want the emphasis, the darkest area, to be on the outer eye. I don't even do the inner lashes because I don't want to pull the eyes together. For example, if you have very wide set eyes and you want them to look closer together, you want the dark, it's the same with makeup. You want the darkest area to be on the inner corners of the eye to pull them together. If they're close set, you want them in the outer corner to pull them apart further. So my brows are kind of a little too close together and I, that's kind of a compromise I do. I will get the inner hairs just because it does look masculine. Now the, you'll notice that the brows will take the dye faster than the lashes. So I used to always do the lashes first but I kind of like to just throw the, the brow hair on there to get them going. You can always take the dye off the, the, the brows before you take the dye off the lashes. So I start with just closing my eye and kind of slathering it a, a, across the top lashes. And again, if you have too much peroxide, it's going to get in your eye and it's going to burn like hell. So make sure that you've got a nice moussey consistency in the dye. And try not to get too close to the eye, especially when we're going to go underneath. Just try to get the middle to the end of the lashes. And as you can see here, I don't really do the inner lashes because I don't want to pull my eyes too close together. Some people say, this is not a guy thing. Get out of the 20th century, man. That's that's gender stereotyping. This can actually give you a more masculine appearance. I know right now, thicker brows are in for women, but they, they do give you a, a, a more masculine look. But androgyny is awesome. On the inner lashes, you have to be very careful not to touch your eye <laughs> because it will burn. It'll start running and the, the dye will get all over your face and you have to start all over again. So. Make sure it's thick enough. The hardest ones to get are the outer ones. And those are the ones I want to concentrate on having close set eyes. Now on the lower ones, sometimes you do have to just barely touch the skin in order for the, the dye to grab the lash. But be very careful not to get in the eye there. I guess they call it the water line. Just barely touch the water line. Okay, so I had a look in the bathroom mirror and I uh, just did a few touch-ups so I could get in there really close and make sure I got all the hairs. Now, if you have some drips, like I have right here, all you have to do is take a Q-tip and kind of scrape them off, especially if you put enough, um, I'm going to put some more on, moisturizer there. They'll just slide right off. Yeah, so you can see already now with the dark area surrounding it, how much brighter the eyes look and it really draws attention to the color of the iris. So I usually let it sit for about 45 minutes and then I'll take the brow dye off first and leave the eyelash dye on a bit longer. Okay, so we're just about finished letting it dry. 
Now when it starts to burn, that's a good indication that you probably left it on long enough and I can feel it starting to burn right here now. Now be very, very careful when you're wiping it off because it's very easy to push, accidentally push it into your eye and it will burn. So be very gentle. Sometimes I use um, tissues, toilet paper and pull away from the eye. And again, use a drying cloth that you don't mind getting um, bleach on. Sometimes you'll have to do little touch-ups too. Um, like when I blink, <laughs> which is inevitable, my eyelashes will stick together and maybe the, the bulk on the top will transfer to the bottom. So you'll have some lashes on the top that have no more dye on them. So you just add a little bit more as it, as it progresses, as it dies, as it's doing its thing. Uh, just do little touch-ups as it goes. Now I can feel it starting to burn, so I am going to go wash this off. <laughs> Okay, so here I am, I washed it all off, and as you can see, my, my eyes are a bit red just from the fumes of the um, peroxide, but it's nothing to worry about. I'll show you an after picture tomorrow, just because now you can see it doesn't look its best because the skin's kind of pigmented a little bit from the dye. You're going to want to make sure that you have tissues handy because the fumes will make your nose run. Hi guys, so this is me a couple days later. Those of you who are thinking it sounds a bit precarious, a bit dangerous, fear not, I've been doing it for 19 years and still have optimal ocular health and 20-20 vision in fact. You do have to be careful obviously with the peroxide. Uh, make sure it doesn't drip into your eye and if it does, flush it out. Anyway, uh, happy dying. I hope this video is informative and please give me a like, share, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And the peroxide bleaches it out so that the color can grab. <laughs> Ivor! He wants to be on camera. Here. Ivor, look! Say hi! 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 Oh, he's the sweetest baby. Now, I'm not by any means saying that I think darker brows and lashes are more attractive. I find they look better on me. For example, I have a friend, Miles Sexton, who um, <laughs> bleaches his eyebrows and, and eyelashes and it looks awesome. It looks really avant-garde, really couture, very striking, kind of that Tilda Swinton kind of look, which is very cool too. By the way, we are in my beautiful log cabin home slash music studio, Kenna Road Studios, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of New Brunswick, Canada, and please Go ahead and check out some of my other videos, some of my music. I would really appreciate that. And I want to get to know you, too. So message me on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. I'll follow you back. Let's get to know each other.